Welcome back to another episode of the Stevie Weeby Show. How you doing there, Stan? Okay. We have a very special guest tonight, comedian Theo Vaughn. Welcome him. Woo. Oh, oh, oh. You, got, you got a little bit bigger hands than I expected. Oh, were you expecting a small? No, I actually you have nice hands. Oh, thank you. I and my stepmother that. has nice hands too. Yeah, thanks for coming, man. Thank you for having me, man. Um, I brought you a gift, actually. You did? Mm-hmm. What is it? I'm from New Orleans, and oh, it's a city. Oh, shit. Creole it's a southern onion. city. Zaps potato chips. Can I try one right now? They don't like me chewing in the mic, but yeah, fuck they're really it. Loud, I don't care so. what they say. Well, they're really loud. Mm-hmm. Why well, you really get into a bag of chips easily, huh? Yeah, are they good? Oh yeah. I thought you and your wife would like them. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. You so got- you're from you're from um, the south. I'm from Louisiana, man. Oh shit. We got a lot of. We have uh, the only Vietnamese House of Representatives person. <laughs> We only have the only Viet in the for, house. For in, real? In the, in the House of Representatives, yep. And in America. And your dad is from Nicaragua? Mm-hmm. Oh, and then it said on your wiki that he had you when he was 70 years. Is that true? 70 years old? My father had me when he was 70 years old. Damn. And he was, um, what was he like? He was just kind of like a regular guy, mm-hmm. maybe about 6'1", mm-hmm. but getting shorter by the hour almost because of old age. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, old age takes a lot of density out of your bones. That's and why if you're really old, I feel like you should almost, I don't want to say like bathe in milk, but you want to, you want to get the suppositories or something. You want to yeah, yeah. just hide calcium in your ass or whatever you got to do to bone mm-hmm. up, mm-hmm. you know, to get marrow heavy. I'm serious. Yeah. How old are you? I'm in my forties. Are you really? Yeah. You look older than that actually did a little bit. <laughs> no offense. Yeah. What, cause, what, cause of the, cause of the beanie? Oh, uh, maybe, maybe uh, that's it. Yeah. Well, you seem like uh, a nice guy, though. Yeah, you know, I, we met. So, how do we? We met at my brother's birthday. We did. Your brother invited me to a birthday off the interstate mm-hmm. during rush hour traffic at the Filipino <laughs> at the Filipino restaurant. Yeah, and they had Filipinos there. Yeah, and um, mm. and I love your brother. You know, he's hard to love at times. You know that. Oh yeah, you got a brother too. I got a brother too, and he was Older? hard to love. Now he's a little easier to love. Do you guys fight? No. Oh, okay. One of us hit the other one with a chair once when we were young. Oh, really? What was that over? I don't know. One of us was wearing a disguise, so I don't remember who was who. Oh. But, um, <laughs> but it was violent. It was like one of the most violent things that ever happened to me. Wait, it was, and it was kid- a nice chair. It was an antique. How old were you? Um, I was probably 11. 11 years old. Yeah. And then you have two uh, sisters? I have two sisters. Mm-hmm. One of them lives kind of by the interstate. Mm-hmm. And one of them... <sighs> Actually, just got fat recently, like this past year. I'm so sorry, dude. You're killing and that me. That doesn't mean I'm serious, man. And I'm not trying to be rude to anybody that's, uh, that's yeah, bigger yeah, or not. Yeah. You know, yeah. I might be gay when I get older. Yeah. <laughs> so you never know. To me, you never know what life has kind of in store for you, you know, or what's around the next turn. I don't put anything out of it. That's why when people are say, like, uh, you know, they have issues uh, with gays or yeah. they have issues with fats or whatever, like, yeah. that could be you next week. And that could be, that's why I don't put anything out. You know, my, I mean, everybody in my family's really had a pretty, almost pretty shitty existence. So I could see anything could happen to me, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, when I was young, I used to have fears that I was going to lose, lose an appendage. Really? Oh, dude. So many fears about it. I yeah. grew, grew up with intense anxiety and I would have intense fears when I was young that I was going to lose an appendage. And I remember even, I would go, not a week, but I would go a couple of days at a time where I would tie like one of my arms up mm-hmm. or tie one of my legs up to even just get used to like mm-hmm. what it would be like if that happened. Why, that, w- why, why that particular thing? Why were you scared of that? I don't know. Yeah. I think, I don't know if when I was young, I saw somebody that, you know, didn't have one and it just shocked me because I didn't know you could not have an appendage. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Because everybody I've met up until that point had had all their appendages. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then I remember meeting a guy and he didn't have an arm. And I was just 
I mean, it just shook me to my core. Yeah, Yeah. I was like, how do you Mm -hmm. not have an arm? You know, yeah, that's fucked up. It was just baffling to me. Like, how can you not have an arm? Mm -hmm. Like, even if you try to not have an arm, you really can't. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And this guy didn't have it, and I remember thinking that us that I don't ever want to be like that. And and then my mom told me it could happen to anybody. Yeah. And she just kind of left it vague like that. How old were you? Mm, probably seven. Oh. And then it says here you're from a place called Covington, Louisiana. Yeah. What was it like there? Covington, Louisiana. Yeah. Um, so shout out to Covington. Yeah. Shout out to Covington, yeah. 704, 7041. They keep switching us around a little bit and redrawing some of the lines. <laughs> Seven to four three one, and it's um it was big in the turpentine business back in the day. You oh, ever get really? involved with tine or anything by your country? No, <laughs> oh, no. What, are you, what were you guys into? Uh, kimchi. Well, kimchi. Kimchi's like, a vegetable, right? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. A, like a, it's a cabbage mm-hmm. that's grown in the ground. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's good mm. uh, probiotic. Yeah, yeah. But you know, you ha- you like Korean barbecue? Uh, yeah, I like. So, I mean, yeah. I like a little bit of. Uh, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't even know. I didn't know Bobby had a brother, actually. And I found out <laughs> oh, I was uh, at, shocked. I was wow. sh- mesmerized that he never told me he had a brother. You know, because it just seems like the only thing about Bobby is like he's just hard to get to know, kind of, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. What I, I, feel I, like. I, I think I understand what you're saying. He kind of puts up a. Uh, like well, a there's just wall, so many things maybe. going on. You don't know yeah. what's real sometimes. You well, because he's always like. Like, yeah, he's always pulling up his pants. Yeah, and like, yeah. Does he try to touch your dick and stuff? Uh, I think he used to, but yeah. I think... Because he does that because he likes you. Cause, he does? Well, he's done it with all the other comics. He's done stuff like that. Yeah. He's almost like a Bichon kind of, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> My buddy used to have this Doberman that would have almost tried to suck you off even, <laughs> which is crazy, bro. <laughs> Real talk, dude. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I love your brother. You know, I've yeah. been fortunate enough that we've become buddies over the past year or two, and I know he really, he, you can tell he really loves you. You know, what, wait, wait, what, 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 what gives that away? He just like, uh, like one way that I notice I can talk to him and he'll be more normal is if I talk about you. Oh yeah, but we used to fight. Really? Yeah, I pulled knives on him. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I could see that easily, dude. Yeah. I, I got pissed at him last night. I was gonna drop him off at a fucking any local vfw and just let him get his ass kicked you know <laughs> how long how'd you meet how, how long you know him, bob you know i don't really know actually he's one of those things you don't even know how long you've you've had it you know it's mm-hmm. like a mole on your neck you're like you next thing you just notice that it's big <laughs> and honestly that's kind of how our friendship's been it's been like yeah. he loves you does he he loves your comedy dude. oh that's good yeah yeah, yeah. and i love his man I, yeah. he, he's just uh you know he's just got that weird gift that he can just always make people laugh and i bet yeah. that's got to be weird yeah. did you notice that when you were a kid that he was always able to make people laugh yeah well we used to do this game well he did it with my friends called the laughing game mm-hmm. and so he'd we'd go to the in the kitchen and we'd all be like just circle around the the table and he would basically put on an act and mm-hmm. we but we couldn't laugh oh, so hilarious. if you laughed then he'd hit you he would hit you, he would oh, hit my you like, like, you know, like, oh my god like yeah yeah, yeah. Dude. and then but he was kind of a bully like uh we did a a map i could for, see that i could yeah, see him being he, like a little emperor yeah like we had to do a draw a map for um uh, of europe mm-hmm. and we stayed up all night me and my friend steve bourgeois and he fucking walked in and he's the most asian <laughs> thing ever staying up all night drawing a map <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then he uh, he came and he's like, what the, "What's this?" And he fucked up our maps. Uh uh-uh. Yeah, what See, an ass. yeah, he used to do stuff like that. But do you think it was uncontrollable? Yeah. Or you think he did it out of maliciousness? No, he's just being a dick. Yeah, yeah. So, but you were older than him, weren't you? No, he's he's older than me. He is. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. And you know, we grew up in kind of a fucked up household too. Like it was haunted. Like our house was like really haunted. Was, really? Oh yeah. Wow. Because it's oh, we're from a place called Poway. Mm-hmm. And it, I think it's like a lot of Native American uh, history. Like yeah. it was like our house was probably built on like a burial ground type oh, shit. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. We both got almost got possessed. Booze and bones, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's yeah. any heartland, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so, you can't even, I mean, you can't. Yeah. You check any Native American's car, you always find gin and... Oh, femurs or something you know they love yeah. they keep the dead with them a lot of times i almost knocked this 
unfortunately almost knocked this young lady up that was from South Dakota. And she lived on a reservation, yeah. Oh. And she like threatened to have the baby. Oh, um, damn. How old were you? 37 wow. this year. <laughs> it was this year. And she wouldn't even be cool. She wouldn't. She threatened to have the baby, dude. And I just <laughs> met her at a motel. <laughs> yeah. And she threatened to have a baby, man. And so that's. Where how'd you meet? Uh, tell I met us on, some backstory, I met her on man. Snapchat. You did? Yeah. And then I met her in person on a motel only hours later. Wow. And, uh, and it went down like that, huh? Yeah. Oh, jeez. And it was definitely. So I don't recommend that kind of stuff. I don't yeah. recommend making love to people off of Snapchat. <laughs> this South Dakota? Dude, this was in, no, this was in a different city. She was out of, oh. she was, you know, out of their whatever How'd you talk her zone. out of it? How'd you talk her she out She came out. She, uh, she just said uh, immediately, she's like, if I have this baby, I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, I'm having it. What? And I was like, fuck? Jesus Christ. that make, were you like, do you have so a panic scared. attack, man? Well, part of it, I had a ton of things. I had, yeah. let me think about what I had. So first I was honestly, anger was my first feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was angry. I was like, this girl wants to you know, she's trying to take out, she's angry or maybe at just, you know, men or something. She's trying to, maybe I thought maybe she's trying to entrap a guy, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And then I saw, I felt some anger and then I felt, then honestly, I felt some selfishness because I was like, I don't know if I want to go see my child that's going to, because her family lives on a reservation. Oh, I was like, damn. I don't know if I want to go see a child that's going to live on a reservation. Two flights to get there. Damn. So it's never a direct flight. So you're yeah. not going to, you know, you're not going to go up there on Friday. You're going to go up there on Saturday. Yeah. And you got to come back on Sunday. Yeah. Jesus. So it's like, I don't want to raise my son one night at a time, you know, yeah. every other month. And then when so I started she, thinking about all that and yeah. then not seeing him and then seeing him and he's, you know, he's just not like me. And then not even knowing like what he, what he wears to school, uh, hey, all sorry. kinds of yeah, yeah. So when did All she kinds have of stuff like that? When did know? she have a change of heart? Like, like I don't want like. I just texted her like three weeks later and asked her if she had the baby, and she said no. I said, oh, she goes, oh no. She texted me a couple like uh, about a week later. She goes, I heard you talking about not wanting this baby on your podcast because I talked about it on my podcast immediately. Wait, is that that one's called the past weekend? Uh, this past weekend. Yeah, this yeah. past weekend. Okay. I started talking about it immediately because mm -hmm. I was so scared and I was looking for advice or yeah, guidance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, spiritual healing. Mm -hmm, and he, mm -hmm. People were mailing stuff into me. Oh, uh, what were they like? What kinds of things were you getting? Uh, oil. Let me see. I got some oils. I got a. <clears throat> um, I saw somebody sent me like a parental handbook or something. How to be a parent. Yeah. Damn. Which is like how the fuck, but it should be how to be a parent over the phone, you know? Yeah, dude. Like that's the book you need or how to be a parent of mm -hmm. a, you know, how to be a non, you know, how to be a parent from another state to a child on a reservation for dummies, you know, yeah. like that's what I needed. I yeah. needed something. I need Ooh. something specific and it's not some things, some instances you can't even talk to certain people about, you know? And so yeah. I, anyway, I just felt trapped. That was scary. But, uh, but yeah, man, I could imagine Bobby being a real piece of shit when he was young, you know? <laughs> and, but I noticed the one time when it's easy for me to talk to him is when, if I talk to him about you, oh, it's like yeah. immediately it's like, he just gets like a more, I don't know if it's comfortable or just more, I don't know if he likes, just likes talking about his brother or if he just, yeah. You know, you're like one of his favorite things, but you can tell he like, he just gets more real. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, I don't know if you know this about my brother. He, he got, he was a wrestler. So he got me into wrestling at really? a very young, yeah. Jesus Christ. Because uh, people who don't know, I come from a place, Poway is known for the wrestling program. Really? Oh, and my brother was good, man. Wow. He just got caught up in drug, like. You're talking he, to wrestle on drugs. Yeah. He was like, the coach was like, you got to make 105. He was like 125, 130. And he just went to rehab. Mm. And he was like, God, I, I don't want to cut all that weight. I'd rather just do this rehab, rehab. Or, or get clean, you know? Yeah. Wow. But, uh, yeah, man. It's gnarly at, uh, in that town. They'll scout you out when you're like a little, like really? the, the high school coach will go to the middle schools and, and like, you know, size you up. Like yeah. they'll like, they're like, kind of like, they just scout you out. They're mm. like, Ooh, yeah, he's going to be does good. Does it feel illegal? Is it dirty over there? Or uh, is it just kind of, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? I mean, it just sounds like, <sighs> I mean, it's crazy. Like a lot of these, you know, where is Poway? First of all, exactly. Where is it's, it's more inland, like Escondido. <laughs> yeah. It's not like, Oh, I thought it was in damn Laotian or something. I thought you guys were Laotian. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm thinking like Yo, this island or something. No, man. You're talking about the fucking it's airport? It's San Diego. No, it's oh, San Diego. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's not Leo. Well, dude, just get out of town. Jesus. You act like some guy's coming down from the fucking mountain. No. Or coming no. down from the volcano and picking you guys out <laughs> off the branches, no. man. No. Jesus Christ. No, it's, uh, it's a place in San Diego. Oh. It's a town in San yeah, Diego. Yeah, we'll fucking get it together and yeah, leave. Yeah, yeah. You know? So uh, what happened was, uh, you know, he was he went to all my meets. Wow. Cuz he was like So it, you ended up being better at wrestling then. Yeah. Mm. I was actually ranked second in this state my really? senior year, yeah. Of California? And, yeah, of California. <laughs> no. and, and and I choked and I choked oh. at the state tournament. No way. I choked. And that's when I start boozing. Do you remember why you choked or not? Fear? Really? Yeah, it's like you, like, imagine a stand-up going, like, doing a show, and then, like, right when, like, there's a crowd, mm-hmm. like, it's packed, mm-hmm. and you d- your mouth doesn't even open. Wow. You can't even do your bits or something. I don't know. No, I had to look. The first <laughs> yeah. audition I ever had in town, I remember being so scared, I couldn't even open my mouth in an audition room. Well, for, what was that for? I don't remember. Not okay. even something big, but it was at E. It was at the E Network, and mm-hmm. I remember I could not even open my mouth. And I was like, can you guys open the window or something? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, the windows don't open up here. We're like on the 26th floor of some building. Yeah. Like, the, the windows don't open up here. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what kind of shitty company doesn't even let you kill yourself if you want to? <laughs> and then I'm like, well, can we open the door? And like, well, it's a little awkward to be auditioning with the door open. Like, we don't usually do that. Yeah. And then I'm like, these people are mean, you know? Yeah. And then I just, yeah. but I literally, when they said, okay, action i could not move i was, was so fear? nervous fear yeah yeah but man i can't that's so crazy yeah, but you man, still had to physically fear. be out there and oh, wrestle dude it, it was one of these things where the the ref would blow the the whistle and then i would be in my stance and before you know it the guy was already in my legs mm. like i was literally not there mentally right i don't because know it's connecting hard to your body and your brain yeah it's hard to explain yeah but the thing is i always won san diego section mm-hmm. it's Always when I went to state, I would like psych myself out wow. and choke hard. What do you think it yeah. was when you think back on it? Like when you um, really think what the fear was? Because because it was the expectations like I was supposed to win that shit or right. I was supposed to do real good. And all it's just pressure. Yeah. Yeah. What did the, were the crowds? Did you feel like the it, crowds were bigger? Did you feel? Yeah. Well, it was in a, it was in the University of Stockton. It was like right? at, so it, was bigger, it was on yeah. camp. Yeah. The college camp. It was in right. an arena. So that's a. That's different. That makes that's different for sure. Yeah. So that can make you feel different. Yeah, yeah. But I just remember I got so depressed after that. My brother drove from San Diego all the way oh. to Stockton to watch me. Oh. Yeah, he always brings it up. He's like, man, I drove all that way, man. It's not that far, really. Well, it's, it's you know, seven hours. Yeah, it's about seven, eight hours. Yeah. But it's just once he had to drive up there. No, because I... Oh, I, you went a couple I, years yeah, in a row. No, no, I qualified from sophomore year on. Okay, so three times he had to drive up there for his three brother? Three times I choked at state. So, sorry, Branstetter, that's my coach. Um, yeah, man, I moved on. Now you look like a wrestler a little bit. What? Well, no, I was the little guy. I, I was a nine, like a 103 pounder. Really? Yeah. yeah. Damn. I was a little guy. Yeah. Do you feel small or you feel... How I do you feel on the inside? <laughs> What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Like whatever. I mean, I'm yeah. just like a regular height, you know, I'm like yeah. six foot tall, but you are probably, what height are you? Five, four, five, six? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, five, four, five, five. I'm a buck 35, buck 40, if that. When you get up out of bed, is it, eat, is it like, it seemed like you get out of bed really quick at that I, I can. Um, I'm kind of like my brother because we like rely, we you used to. You could get in the refrigerator, can't you, if you wanted, if you took the shelves out. I, I probably could if I like That's cool, crunched yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm just trying to think of fun things you like see me like you could probably do if you were like, um, just like kind of a more regular height, you know, or just like your unique height, you know. Yeah. Like not in a bad way. I'm just yeah. like there's some things if I look at a place, I'm like, oh, I, I can't get under that or I can't do this, mm-hmm. you know. How I can't tall are you? How big jump are you? on that person's back or anything? Yeah. Like you seem like you could be more fun, probably. Well, like what do you mean by that? Like I think people look at you and like, oh, this guy's probably more fun. Yeah, maybe. Like I if don't they had know. a more fun contest yeah. and you had a hundred people, who's more fun? <laughs> I bet I, I bet could, eighty of them. I would like pick having you. fun. Yeah, I like yeah, having fun. Yeah, I don't drink. Uh, I don't drink alcohol or I don't smoke marijuana anymore, though. Yeah, me neither. I'm about uh, nine years clean. Are you? Yeah. Oh, nice, man. So my sobriety date October twenty sixth. Oh, nice. Two thousand eight. Wow. Yeah. I, I I just I can't I can't do it anymore. Yeah. I literally turn into like the Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde. Like really? Oh yeah. Yeah, I used to do some bad things. I went to Arizona State. Like, Ooh, yeah, and I, I went to University of Arizona. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, in it was Tucson. Boring. Bunch yeah, of there ain't shit there. Yeah. And fucking no shirt sleeves. What'd you do there? People cutting the tops off their cars with yeah. saws. <laughs> it is, dude. 
Yeah, it is. Go there. Go so there and see, if, see if you don't find a car top somewhere. You went to U of A? Yeah. Went wow. to U of A for one year, man. I didn't like it. You went to dorms? No, I lived off campus. Just worked at a restaurant. I was <sighs> like washing dishes, yeah. some shithole. Just wanting to kill myself. Didn't have a gun. You really want to kill yourself? Yeah, it just was, it was, he- yeah, I was just going through some tough times personally, but yeah, it was just, um, yeah, I mean, it was okay. I yeah, mean, people yeah. were nice there. It was just, um, you do, what was you it? do, I mics? think I just didn't like being far away from home, probably. I was far yeah. away from Louisiana. And then when did you start doing your comedy, man? Cause of- Let me see, probably 2003. Oh, so about 14. And what got years you ago. into it, man? I think. <laughs> Well, what had happened was I'd like a, I'd done like a reality show when I was growing up, right? A show called Road Rules. It used to be a popular show. Oh like, yeah, I remember they don't that. Have it anymore. MTV, right? Yeah, it was yeah, MTV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then at a certain point, like whenever I got done with that, people were just so mean. They were like, uh, they would just judge wait, you. Wait, so, to you? Yeah, they would just be real judgmental, like just because oh. you were on television and yeah, it was like, yeah. and people were like, um, I remember being out here in Los Angeles and people being like, oh well, this part you don't have any talent, right? That's not true though, because we've seen right. Rap. And I was young, man. I was yeah, young. I, yeah. I didn't want to be on MTV. Like I, yeah. you know, I mean, I guess I did, mm-hmm. but I was just nineteen. It's not like I was making any life choices. Right, right. And then the next thing you know, I was like, oh, if you don't think that I have a talent, well, I'm gonna do the hardest job in town, yeah. and I'm gonna do it the best. And that mm-hmm. started to like just get into my head. Like, you don't think I have talent? Well. um, Let's see if I do, you know? Right, um, yeah. So, so then I just got into stand-up, and I always like making people laugh. Like, I used to do a yeah. similar thing when I was a child. At the lunch table, we'd get some kids who were mentals, or a couple of them might have been mentals, and a couple kids that were well, you know? And we'd get there and sit them to make them drink milk, and then tell jokes and do stuff, and t- tell the one of them just blew milk out of their face, <laughs> you know? And if you get some straight up, just a couple mentals, boy, some straight up sawed off humans, you get them to, dude. You get them to for straight up blow leche out their dome, dude. That's America right there. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Oh. And that's when I knew I was oh, like, oh, man. I got some kind of a gift here. You know, I almost blew the throat out of this one boy. Oh. Oh. Almost threw the this Jeez. almost blew blew the throat out of this this one boy named Tot T O T was his name. <laughs> kind of a bad name too to be mentally challenged. But also easy for him to spell. And I'm not joking, that's what his father said. And um, easy for him to spell backward and forward. Same name, Todd. So that's true, man. <laughs> was this guy's real his name was Todd? Yeah, <laughs> Why are you so laughing at him? It's just a funny sounding name, that's all. I'm yeah, sorry. You're right. Yeah, you're It so was pretty funny, yeah, I guess. Todd. Yeah, well, you know, let's tot. talk about Todd. Sometimes like, he would just say T O T was his name, but I yeah. knew it was Todd. Yeah. He would try to spell it out and, you know, like he was tricking me. Yeah. So, uh, so did you do like the open mic circuit in LA? Yeah, started you, doing open mics here. Like at Marty's or where? Like at mm-hmm. uh, the they Comic Meltdown and stuff? No, they had a place uh, over on the west side of town. I lived, yeah. I was sleeping under, a buddy of mine had a bed and I was sleeping under his bed for $150 a month. Oh, wow. And sometimes even in his bed sometimes. <sighs> When he would be out of town or when he would leave for work, I'd climb up into his bed, dude. And I've never been heavily homosexual, but I will say this, that there's nothing really gayer than getting into a man's warmth after he's already left the room, you know, and climbing up into his bed. A man you don't even really know that much, but still catching that hit off of his temperature, you know? It's true, man. Yeah. You go over to somebody's oh. house, dude, who you don't know that much. Yeah. When they leave the room and get the get get out of their bed, you get into their bed. That should make you a, never told them that though. That should'll make a man out of yeah. you fast, dude. Or it won't. But you find out who's who pretty quick when you're doing stuff like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I was doing stuff like that. Uh, and they had a place around the corner, the uh, armadillo it was called. And they had a comedy night there once a week. They had a room in the back. And I started just telling jokes. Um like my dad was real old. I told you know we talked yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah. So I would just joke about that. Oh, you did bits on your dad? Yeah, I just started joking about that, man. Um, and I'd always love to make people, make people laugh. Mm-hmm. And one of the only times I ever really felt comfortable, I just was like, you know, I mean, I suffered from alcoholism and some of the isms. You yeah, know, it's so always yeah. had that just inner voice that was just fucked yeah, up. You mm-hmm. know, or yeah, yeah, I got that too. You notice that anxiety and mm-hmm. just uncertainty mm-hmm. so I always 
felt like people didn't like me, I guess. But if people were laughing, then they like you, dude. Yeah, because they Cause couldn't they didn't hate like you. Me. They wouldn't laugh, right. dude. They couldn't hate me in that moment. Yeah, I needed them. To, I needed them to constantly be laughing because I needed. Oh them. right, because it was like a, it was just like I knew that they didn't not. They couldn't not like me if they were yeah, physically, right. if I could see them, it was That's proof. interesting, man. Yeah. My brother used to say, because he was like, it, there, in his comedy career, he was like, there, there comes a moment where it's almost like a drug getting that from them. Yeah. And he thrives on that. Mm. He's like, oh, I need that. Like, because he's, he's sober too. And yeah. That's, it was kind of like an adrenaline rush for him. Like, you Oh, know? yeah, I could see that. If he yeah. didn't get that, who knows what would happen to him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is kind of weird. Like, I don't even know. Yeah, that's a good point. And maybe this is just something that I need to be okay. Yeah, I think it's therapeutic for guys like you and Bob. Yeah. Because it kind of, I don't know, getting that, that I don't know, that exchange from the that audience. Reverb. Yeah, yeah that dude. T- they're yeah, like, telling you, that. you're all right. You're, you're a funny yeah. guy. Yeah. But do you, you yeah, never bombed though, right? Did you bomb at all in the beginning? Yeah, I've definitely bombed a few times. Yeah, yeah. You know, I bombed the other night somewhere. You I mean, still? Yeah, it was just sometimes it's a weird crowd. Sometimes there's, you know, it could be a strain. Sometimes during the year, there's just a weird night or two where everybody doesn't, yeah. everybody doesn't do well. Yeah, I, I, op- I, try, I try to do what I try to do. You try it. to do stand-up? Yeah. Really? And, um, I opened up for Bob at the Tempe Improv. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> no! and it was it was a packed crowd. Yeah. And I had, uh, cause I was hitting mics and everything, yeah. but I did this cowboy rap thing. Uh-huh. It wasn't even a bit. It was just me, you know, doing the thing and, and I bombed horrendously. Damn. Yeah. It was painful. Oh, damn. So they kicked me off the other shows. Really? So yeah. Well, I knew something wasn't right. Cause I did my thing. I didn't engage the crowd and I just did it. And the MC <laughs> had to save me. The MC no had to way. go, hey. Anyway, <laughs> come on, really? let's get off the stage. That's, wow. And so I just remember, I because uh, you've been to the Tempe Improv. Yeah. You have to walk through the crowd to get to the green room. Yes. So oh. I remember I remember walking like I was just, I, like I thought I did good and I was walking by all the crowd and they wouldn't even look at me. They were oh. just like, like that. And I'm like, oh. and that that's when I'm like, oh. I, like I, a whore I, in the 1700s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so I was in the green that room stings, and my brother man. goes uh, I'm proud of you mm-hmm. that you went up but uh, yeah they we don't we're they don't have time <laughs> yeah they, but he want, he was trying to save my right save you know right he was trying he to didn't want to tell me that the manager went up to him and said your brother's cut right he just said uh, yeah you could go home. yeah you just drive drive back you could drive back yeah. damn yeah. cause there's two other shows yeah yeah Oh, I, yeah. Was that a bummer or not? Oh, it was painful. Yeah, because I heard, got it from my mom too. I guess my brother was texting her when I because I went to Del Taco. What an I, got, I wanted tacos. And yeah, then I bought tacos, drive through, and then I went home. And my mom knew I didn't do well, oh. so she was getting on me like asking about the bits. No, and like, what did you do? And I'm like. Yeah, I was just doing a cowboy rap, Ma. She goes, that's not comedy. And I was no. like, you don't know comedy, Ma. <laughs> yeah, you know, I went, I stormed upstairs. Damn. And then my brother went in. This is in Gilbert, Arizona. Yeah, my, yeah. my mother's my, a yeah. in Gilbert. And so my brother went in later that night into the room and he goes, C- can I talk to you? And I go, yeah, what do you want? And he goes, I just have a few suggestions, man. Let me help you write. Mm. And then I got really defensive at that. Mm. I go, I know comedy, man. I was like, just really like stubborn, you know? Damn, dude. Yeah. That's like a weird, like a. Yeah, it was like just a weird, weird like, man. I, yeah, it was painful. And that was one of the last times I think I did it. Yeah, it yeah. seems like a weird foreign kind of Eminem. Yeah, thing it was going very on. weird. Yeah. I, not, like Yemen M. <laughs> Where's Yemen? <laughs> Where's Yemen? Yeah. Uh, Middle East. Yeah, Middle oh. East, yeah. Man, if it was yeah. Asian, that would have been a good one. Yeah, that would have been real good, yeah. I could write my own raps, Bob. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Valenzuela was our dad's name, Richie. <laughs> I can draw the cartoons, you know? <laughs> I met a girl and Donna was her name. <laughs> Richie Valens. Dude, I love yeah. that movie, huh? Oh, La Bamba? Yeah. You know what? That makes me kind of think of my, like, that... Reminds me of my brother. Yeah. Like, I could see that a little bit. Yeah. Except the roles are reversed. I'm like more of Bob. Yeah, more like Bob. 
and, yep. and Bob's Richie, you know, because my brother, he's, his, you know, he's, I want him to maybe lose a couple pounds and everything. Yeah, I don't think that movie's really about weight loss when the guy yeah. dies. It's more about <laughs> he fully dies. It's not like he d- crashes in a plane and shows yeah. back 15 pounds lighter. You know? Right, right. Um, but I'm just worried about my brother, you know? That's all I'm worried about. Yeah, man. I, yeah, you know, I love him, you know? He's, yeah. That's well, he's a lovable thing. guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, the funny, the interesting thing about him, one of the interesting things about I him. I love that movie, me, though. I love it. Man. It's a great movie. I fucking love it. If you've never seen La Bamba, go yeah, check so it out. Yeah, so La Bamba. Who, who plays, uh, uh, what's um, that guy's actor's name? Um, I interviewed him this year, actually. What's his name? His name is... Uh, oh, fuck. Uh, Lou Diamond Phillips. Lou Diamond Phil- Phillips. And you yeah. know what the interesting thing about him is? He's um, native. Yeah. He's Native American, oh, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. But he gets a lot of Latino roles. Yeah. So he then gets invited to a lot of like Latino, actual, real, like events. Latino progressive events. Yeah. And and he, he doesn't have any choice but to do it because you know it's something that's positive and they mm-hmm. just see him that way because he's in so many of those roles mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that he's like wow this is like a weird calling that i've you know am fulfilling in the world mm-hmm. i'm not even uh latino yeah. but here he is I like on the was, latino man. council for like the you know united states of america and like wow. latinos in action and like yeah. you know what other movies has he been in? I'm trying. He's been in quite a few. I just can't remember other ones. Yeah, he's been in a. T- he's been in. I mean, um, he has worked more than he's worked a lot forever. in the eighties. In the eighties, a oh, lot. Oh, yeah, and in even still now, he's. A, I think he's on a couple of. He's a lead on a series now. He's always in movies. He constantly yeah. works. Blue Diamond Phillips. He does some directing as well. Yeah. But yeah. one of the ni- I got to interview him this year, and he was one of the nicest men. Was he nice? Oh, such a sweet guy. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, that role was unbelievable. Yo, yeah, that movie. I was remember it was one of the first movies I ever saw. Was that movie? And it was well, good, what man. what what scene kind of sticks out? Uh, a couple There's a scenes. couple of them. Yeah, he tries to take him to the uh, whorehouse down there. Yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then the the guy with the 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 magician guy, the the old the the wise guy with the snake. Remember that he takes him into the reservation. Mm-mm. Right, and then he gives it that necklace. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, that see, I, don't, I don't remember that part yeah. though. Or in I the, remember it a little bit. Yeah. There was a lot of, I like the dynamic with him and his brother, though. There was the jealousy, but love, oh, yeah. and you know what I mean? Yeah, and then he, in the end, he just like, um, the guy died. Yeah. Oh, in the plane in with, the plane, uh, with Buddy, Bob, Holly. Buddy, Buddy Holly. With the big bopper and yeah, Buddy Holly. Yeah, yeah. So he was huge, man, for that time period. Uh, and to be a, to, to be a Mexican-American. Yeah, dude. Or Mexican and to have that opportunity. Unbelievable, yeah. man. Yeah, that story's great. And if you're ever in mm. Minneapolis, you can drive about two hours south of there, and you can you can go to a site uh, where the plane crashed. You can where their plane crashed. It's just it's right around the Iowa Min- uh, Minnesota border. Oh, I did I almost not know went that. one day. Almost went, but yeah. instead I drove over to Field of Dreams, which is in Iowa. Oh, they love that, that movie. movie, Kevin Costner. Yeah, and yeah, you can yeah. go. They actually still have it all put together, yeah. and it's um, funded by Pri- It's um, funded publicly, I think <clears throat> they do fundraisers for it, and you yeah. can go visit the actual Field of Dreams and go out there and run around. Yeah. And uh, it's really awesome. So you you like movies from that time period? I, I kind of I'm kind of feeling you out as far as like yeah, I got the stuff stuck you like. Somehow. Yeah, somehow I'm just stuck I, I like in my it, childhood. Like Lost Boys, yeah. and Goonies, and all that stuff. Karate Kid. Yeah, the only, yeah. I, the only thing I've even seen in the past probably 15 years was The Incredibles. Have you seen that? No. It's about like a cartoon family that <laughs> gets um gets uh they kind of fight amongst themselves but then they also fight crime okay cool yeah that's the only one I'm new blade runner I, saw. I never saw any blade runner uh, i saw no, it. any fast and furious no yeah. it oh. oh i tried to see s- s- saw train oregon f- secrets of the e- what is it asian Killers on oh, the train. Okay. What is that? Uh, Orient uh, Express. Murders Orient on the Orient Ex- Express. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know it. Murders on the Orient Express. Piece of shit. If you haven't seen that yet, how about this? I'd rather spend 30 bucks, take an Amtrak, see real crime. Hell yeah. Way better, dude. Take your son, daughter, you know, side piece, whatever, on a $40 Amtrak ride, you know, two cities down, two cities back, half the afternoon, beautiful scenery. Sit in the club car, way better crime. Probably buy some jewelry off of somebody who's a mason. And uh, and much better. Much better show, though. 
Can, I wanted to go back to Covington because it says here that... Yeah, Turpentine Country. The stray animal belt of that region? What does that mean? The stray animal belt. I grew up so, in the stray animal belt. So, and that's just, you know, early 90s. Mm-hmm. You know, God was trying out animals. You know, look at this. It's almost like this. What is this right here? It's a, a Maltese poodle. Okay, so this is a Maltese. Yeah. Where are they from? Malta, obviously. Yeah, but Malta. <laughs> the thing is, is that if they... Say you're in our town, an animal would just go by. Like a dog? Could be. Could be yeah. something else. Tall. We had some tall... I don't know what they were, came, but came by once. Um, what else do we have? Um, animals. Mm -hmm. Livestock. Cats? Cats. I grew up in a near uh, um, hamster and guinea pig breeding area. Whoa. So you have tons of those sometimes getting out. When they got out, you'd see, you know, 700 fucking guinea pig go Damn. by. Damn. You know, and it's beautiful if you've never seen it. <laughs> um, but yeah, chimpanzees, a lot of chimpanzees. There was monkeys? Yeah, dude, Delta Primate Center. Out of here. In our town, they, they tested the polio vaccine in our town. What? The one that they gave out to millions of Americans. They tested it and they... Um, <clears throat> they figured out how to whatever the vaccine was in our town, the town I grew up in. Damn. But otherwise, it used to be it was known to, it was in it, big in a turpentine game until people started just, I guess, finding other ways to get paint off of things. Mm -hmm. And then after that, what else happened? Oh, during the yellow fever epidemic, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it was one of the only two cities in the South that were not quarantined. One of them was Atlanta, and one of them was my hometown of Covington, yeah. Louisiana. Oh, so it became this mystic place where people could be healthy. And they had a lot of natural springs there yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Were there um, a lot of any Asians in your town? <sighs> Let me see. I remember seeing the first Asian I ever saw. Well, I saw some drawings, right? <laughs> I remember definitely seeing a lot of drawings when we were kids of Asians because they're easy to draw. So a lot of kids would draw Asians, right? After that... True story. The next Asian I ever saw, the closest real Asian, was that picture in the Guinness Book of World Records when there's like an Asian, like 17 Asian kids on a bicycle. Remember that one, the famous yeah, picture? Yeah, yeah. That's like, it? No, that was okay. just the first. I was like, holy shit, look what they can do, you know? And it made me like, but it made us do cool stuff on our bike and like see what we could yeah. do. And then there was a rumor when I was about 14 that there was an Asian boy. There was a rumor there was an Asian boy about 17 miles away from us. <laughs> and me and two of my buddies, one of them who had a bad neck, his fellow had a pretty bad, <sighs> you know, that fifth appendage, the neck, people don't think about it. You got to strengthen it. And his was real lean, barely hold his head up. He almost had to, he almost had to walk around like this and also hold his head up with one of his arms. <laughs> but he and I and another kid, uh, got together and decided we want to go see this Asian, you know, this rumored oh, Asian. Right. Yeah, yeah. So we saved up money. We cut grass for about six weeks and saved up money to get a taxi. Just Went, to see this guy? Yeah. Okay. Went to Slidell, Louisiana to uh -huh. go visit him. And Well, you just went to his house? No, it was the oh. address that we got. Oh, you, you, how'd you get this address? Dude, you can get information. Okay. <laughs> okay. And this is back before the internet too. Uh -huh. So this is when you'd ask around. Yeah. And then guess a little. Mm -hmm. And we uh, we went to see him and tried to go see him, but it was just a uh, oh. it was a uh, Chinese food restaurant. Oh, he's a Chinese guy. It wasn't a real Chinese person. It was just I think some kind of white people in hats, and it was like uh, <laughs> I don't know, it might have been like a Mexican Jewish guy running it. Oh, that's weird. But it wasn't any no real Asians. So it was just a myth. So we went back, man. It cost us about $70. Oh, jeez. Um, and then I had some abandonment issues, actually, when it came to Asians for a long time because of that. And then they kid named Jason Desport that showed up when I was in junior high school. And people used to always, people they had this group at the time called Whites Against Mexicans. And people would attack him sometimes, even though he wasn't Mexican, because he was the like, closest thing we had to a Mexican. He was, he was Asian? Pretty much. Korean, Chinese, Japanese... He was kind of like, what is the happy ones you would see like on some of the posters with the rosy cheeks kind of? <laughs> Jesus, I, I don't Like wearing a know. diaper, like sitting in a tub. No, man. George, help me out, man. What do you mean, George, <laughs> George, dude? help me out. <laughs> dude, you can't I don't <laughs> phone a freaking Icelandic guy. Ilani, You're Asian. Ilani. What's he talking about? What's the happiest of the age? I mean, this kid was probably happy, kind of same skin tone as Ilani. 
Yes, he could have been Filipino. <laughs> he was a Filipino guy. Beautiful guy. Okay. And after that, man, since then, though, you know, I grew up and, you know, got surrounded by Asians here and there. Yeah. And, um, you know, I've been to a lot of different Asian countries. I've been to Singapore. I've mm-hmm. been to Vietnam. I've been to Malaysia, Japan, mm-hmm. China. What's your favorite Shanghai. one? Shanghai. Your favorite one? Probably Japan, huh? You know what? I really liked um, China. You did? Yeah. What you like about that? I heard it just, it's overpopulated and smog. Yeah, I liked, yeah, I don't know. It was just really real, you know? It felt oh. like really kind of gristly and edgy, you know? You liked that? I liked that. Yeah. And I liked, I remember in Vietnam, I actually went to some market and they had these, it was, they have like a lot of live animals at the markets there, you know? Because it's, you know, we all, we say fresh to, far, you know, farm to table and all that shit, but Vietnam does farm to table, dude. You can buy a fucking something that like is literally they'll fucking kill it right there in front of you. You can sword fight a pig if you want and then take it home if you win. And you always win because you can just tape like the sword to its arm. But it's like, Oof. you can, you. I mean, it's really farm to table. You go to these markets and they cut the head off of whatever it is right there and you they'll give it to you, you know? Dude. So I had caught this, could have been a dove or something. Um, I caught <sighs> the, I, I'd seen a dove that they were gonna kill and sell for mm-hmm. food. So I'm thinking I'm gonna buy this dove rescue this dove, let this dove free. That's yeah. a peace bird. Mm-hmm. So what happened was get the dove, pay a dollar for it, get that dove, go outside, let the dove free like that. The second I let it go, like nine people went for it. One guy talk, took it, immediately snapped its neck and just left, went home. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Swear to God. And that's when it Damn, showed me like, dude. This, we just have total different perceptions of what's going on. You know, like, yeah. you know, it's like, that was a meal for that guy, huh? Right. But over here, it's like, you know, animal rights, animal cruelty. Yes, animal rights, but the second an animal gets loose on the fucking street in, in Vietnam, it has no fucking rights. I'll tell you that. It has the right to be dinner because millions of people need to eat. And that's the reality Damn. of a lot of situations, you know? People are out here breastfeeding fucking iguanas and shit and like, <laughs> you know, they're only allowed to bathe, you know, after fucking sundown or whatever and all this gay stuff. But the truth is, you go to a place where people need to eat still and we're not just you know you know eating antidepressants every other meal you go to a real place where people are starving these animals don't have any rights and they don't need them these animals are for food you yeah, know yeah, that's what yeah. they are and that's what i realized when i was there dude yeah that's you know? crazy man it's the same way it's like people here like go to india to learn how to like f- feel good it's like we go to a starving country yeah. to learn how to be okay you know it's just like oh, my friend, i don't know my friend jesse uh is still out in India. He's doing a documentary really? about um, there's this whole culture of street dogs. Mm. And it's like, it's literally, he's documenting these different dogs. They're, it's like gangs. Like mm-hmm. this one dog will occupy this street. But if that dog goes into this street, really? He's, yeah, dude. Damn, dude. So he's been out there for a couple years now. Damn, bro. Yeah, yeah. So shout out to like Jesse. On, what's and, up, Jesse? Uh, yeah. like he's on drugs to me. Uh, he's an ex-punk rocker is guy. He really? Yeah, he's Yeah, you'd love him. He might not you'd be. Love him. I mean, a lot of yeah. people are and a lot of people are but, but he's treated like a king out there. Cause is he you know, really? Oh, well, he just puts on a bandana and he just, he's yeah, he's, he's the man there. Dude, I love that yeah. idea. It's gangs of New York, but it's dogs. It's, and it's dogs. And it's, what country is it? India. India. Wow. Yeah. Dude, true story. I was in a, um, Madras one time. I saw a monkey with a watch on. What? True story. <laughs> you did? Swear to God, dude. Some things I've seen, that was one of them. Damn, saw a monkey with a watch crazy. on, dude. And I don't know how old the monkey was, but... Old enough, you know, yeah, to have a watch yeah. on. Out of all those places, what do you think you could live live at any at any of these places that you, you know? Visited? I get scared when I get out by myself. There's something weird. I just get uncomfortable. You like L.A., man? I hate L.A. Do, L.A. is huh? the most yes. It's just disconnected, and I mean, there's the, but there's some dreamers here. There's great people here. Yeah. So it's like you really have to meander through a lot of it. You know, a lot of bullshitters. Though, a huh? lot of bullshitters, and a lot of just bad. A lot of like it's like capitalism at its worst, really. Yeah. yeah. And it's tough. It's tough to be in this industry. And um, how long you been out here now? Let me see. Fourteen years. Wow. When I first moved here, I was like at dinner with my brother's peoples and I was straight from Arizona. Mm -hmm. And I, one thing I realized is they're like, so what do you do? What do you, you know, it's like, it wasn't like, it was like so fake. Yeah. Like, what do you do? So what do you do? And I'm like, Whoa! I got defensive to be honest because I didn't know. You're a wrestler. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, what the fuck do they mean? What do I do? 
Well, fucking, I don't even do fucking body know. slams, bitch. You <laughs> no, know? I just I just didn't know what that meant. But I, now I know. Right. They're like, are you a photographer? Are you an agent? Are you a right. casting agent? Oh, I need this. I need headshots. I need this. Well, you I know? think some people, it's an office. That yeah. LA, it's just an office. And I feel like that when I land here. I feel like it's an office. It's just like a lot of people out here just, you know, <sighs> struggling. It's so lonely. Like everybody's lonely. That's why animals, everybody's concerned about animals because that's, it's like, it's the most friend. It, people have a tough time finding friends out here. Yeah. It's tough for relationships. Did you have a hard time when you first moved? Here? Yeah, I still have a tough time. Only in this Come past on, year and you, a half. I mean, I have a lot of acquaintances. What about the co- other comic? Fr- your other yeah, comic friends? I got some buddies, but I mean, those and those relationships grow over time. Didn't you just go to Canada with like? Yeah, I went to Canada with a couple of guys. Uh, what's you know? his name? Oh, Mike Black. Um, no, 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 Mike Young. Oh, Mike Young. Yeah. Sorry, Mike Young. Mike and Young. sorry, Mike Black. <laughs> Um, but no, we had a great time. Oh, Mike Young, yeah. We had a great time. Um, yeah. But yeah, those things take a time to evolve because you never, you, you only ever see each other at a place where you're competing for stage time. Oh. So there's a little, you know, a little shoulder yeah. bumping going on. Are you you at the store? Are you a comedy store guy now? Yeah. And so I feel so grateful Your name's that place. on the thing? You know? Yeah, name on the thing. So how was that process like? What was that process like? Dude, I really got lucky. I mean, I'd been doing comedy for a long time, you know, out on the road doing mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. You know, probably 10 years out on the road, a lot. And half the year in town, but half the year out on the road. I probably went about $30,000 in debt, you know? You did? Yeah, just had credit card debt. just Because they'll fly you out, but it, you spend everything you make on your flight. Oh, so man. You go all the way there and you take your talent, but you're not really making any money. It's changed and, now, though, right? Yeah, now it's a little bit better. Because your stocks... Now it's a little up. bit better, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's still... I still need to get to that extra hump, you know? Yeah. What's the next hump for, like... Like a special? Because I always tell Bob, like, why don't you have your fucking special out, man? Yeah. Yeah, right? Bob should have one, probably. He should have at least two or three by now. Yeah. He should. Why? It's a why good is, point. I don't know. Why doesn't he not have one? I don't know. I think... You know what? I think he also likes to be comfortable. You know, Bobby just gets set in some way, in some in some spots of comfortability. Well, with you his know? jokes? I and think with everything. Oh. You know, he likes to pee on the balcony, <laughs> you know? And he likes to just be comfortable. Yeah, And yeah. that's okay. I've been there, dude. I went to bed law is probably 31. For real? And outside areas. But he, uh, you know, I think he likes to be comfortable. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you get comfortable in your set. You get comfortable yeah, knowing yeah. what what is going to kill. Right. And he can kill. Bobby can go up there. And, and murder. It. So why would he do anything different? You know, right, right. especially he likes to act. He likes to do different things. And yeah, you know, I mean, to really get out there and fight to be like you know the big, huge, crazy comedy star. Mm-hmm. It's also a lot of pressure. He likes to be at home. Yeah, he'd have to travel a lot. Yeah, maybe the consequences of achieving that level of of notoriety on stage aren't something that he sees as being that rewarding to his lifestyle. Mm, mm, mm. You know? And he would have to write more. Yeah, and he'd, well, yeah, but all Because once you do it on like a HBO or a sh- you know, whatever. Right, and he'd have to, the, yeah, he'd have to do people, the work too. Because people, it's out, it's right. out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he'd have to do the work. I didn't want to say he didn't want to work hard, but you did, so. <laughs> no, no. Maybe Bob, he doesn't. Uh, no, I'll, I'll, we'll no, talk that's about okay. it. We he probably doesn't. doesn't. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, he's doing but well. No, he's doing, he's doing oh, fine. He, he's definitely doing well. He's doing well. He will never not do well. He's doing good. Bobby's the only person in the comedy store who could stand up there, and I would watch him stand up there for 15 minutes. Has he done that? No, but he could. I mean, he just there's just something. He has this weird gift. Like, you know, he's got like this fucking, you know, wild, successful fucking Vietnamese autism, you know, <laughs> that autism. nobody else has ever, ever possessed. I've never seen it in anybody, yeah. you know, and I grew up around a lot of the tism, dude. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So what's next in line for you? Um, as far as trying uh, to get a set out there, man, trying yeah. to get a set on late night. You know, yeah. it's hard these days having a Southern accent in Hollywood. It's really, really tough to but get a job. You could separate yourself from all the other people doing it. Yeah. But they won't even, it's like, it's so tough. I'm trying to get a late night set right now. And they're saying, well, you don't like that. I don't, have some of the same symbolism that some of these, you know, networks have just because of a Southern, like it's crazy. Like think of the last, I like, I like that you have a, a well, yeah, Southern Well, yeah, there's nothing accent. I can do about it. It's I just like so it. like, it's almost, it's not racist, but I don't know what it is. It's, LA's fucked up, man. It Hollywood's is. a fucked up place. It's fucked up, yeah. Um, but think about it, like when was the last Southern white guy that you saw I can't anything? remember, I can't remember. Can you, George? I can't, off top, I can't. It's you. You're the next guy. Well, I mean, yeah. I don't know if I'm the next. But, but you're I don't one think, of them. I don't know if there's a place for one anymore. No, there is. There's got it. There's always where. A, 
Thank this you. is I mean, America, man. Dude, I, mean, I LA, hear you. This is America. I hear you. This is LA. We're in LA, but America. But I'm saying in 20 years, they haven't. I mean, the the blue collar tour. You know, two, yeah. I was just gonna say two that of those was, guys were southern, but that was 22 years ago. That was highly successful. That was 22 years ago. Well, the the cable guy, what's his name? Yeah, Larry the cable yeah, guy. Yeah, Larry the Super cable funny. guy. Jeff Foxworth. It's There's been four guys. Two years. Ron White. They're I don't doing know if arenas, Ron is, man. Wait, Ron's from Texas. That's right. Mm-hmm. And then Bill Lingvall. I'm not sure. Bill might be from North Carolina or something. So yeah, but the, but since then, think about that. Damn, so it's really dude. disheartening, you know, when at you know at 15 years old, you see these guys and it makes and you like, think, oh, I want to do comedy. Yeah. And then you get and chase your own dream, and then you get here, and because things are so like political and ignorant in your own fucking backyard you can't you have a tough time getting a job you know it's i feel weird. like there's going to be a resurgence like because history repeats itself there's going to be it's going to be you and a couple other guys yeah. that do and i don't that mean style. to get bummer about it it's just yeah it's tough sometimes when you just constantly do well and as well as others and you don't get any of the same rewards i start to see how other people of different like ethnicities and faiths and stuff like that feel probably when they feel like they don't get opportunities even if they do just as well you wow. know Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So what? What is it? Is it just your like your hookups or like who you know or like how does no, that work? I think work? everything. I mean, I'm on the best stage in the world, dude. You know? You're like Five at the improv and the comedy store, man. Yeah, I don't know, man. So for now, you know, I just keep doing my work. Yeah, and I think the industry's changing too, where you can make your own industry. Yeah, you know? dude. Because don't you have? Let's talk about you have your own podcast too, right? Yeah, this past weekend it's called this past weekend. Comes out every Monday about life suggestions suggestions for men. Yep, it's yeah. about basic life suggestions for men that are struggling. Uh huh. And when'd you come up with it? Like how, we what? started this year, December nineteenth will be our one year anniversary. All right, congratulations! And thank man. you very yeah, much. Yeah, man. and you came up with it. Yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah, it was easy to come up with. Other people were podcasting, and I was like, I can do it too, yeah. you know? But I will say this. At first, it yeah. was really scary. Yeah. Did you find it scary at first when you started doing podcasting? To be honest with you, I still don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. I, every week, I just I just sit here, and then I hope for the best. Yeah. Yeah, I, I come out. It's weird, right? I come out there to the bathroom. I play a little piano. Yeah. Say hi to the monkey. Then I have a puppet show at the end. So, and then oh, you do? Yeah. I want to watch it. Uh, you don't have to. Yeah, well, well, you could do it on. You could just watch because you. You know, are we good on time? Like, yeah, no, I'm time? gonna leave in a minute. Okay, yeah. Because I know so, you guys have to fly out tomorrow, and I yeah, see yeah. Lady's kind of quieting down, looking like she yeah wants a little bit of that Stevie Weeby, eh? yeah, yeah. Do you guys still have sex for, or no? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We That's do, Yeah, yeah. We're together, man. That's like oh, I know that. That's my baby right there. Oh, she's beautiful, man. I saw. We've her. been get, we've been together for over a year, huh, babe? A year, and four months. A year That's and four awesome. months. You um, guys believe in the Lord, don't you? Where you're from? Um. Well, I, I, I well, cause she's Catholic. She does. Yeah. So I, I'm starting to go to Catholic. Filipinos church. are straight yeah, yeah. up. Yeah, I'm starting to go to Catholic church with her. God's little side pieces, children. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If God yeah. had like about seven billion children with a side piece, they'd be Filipinos. <laughs> I am. Yeah. So when I die and I come back, I want to be Filipino next time. <laughs> no, for real. Dude, I went to. Sierra Leone or something? No. Diego Garcia. It's like an island off the coast of the Philippines, right? Yeah, yeah. And island off the coast of Singapore. And there, everybody that works and lives there is Filipino. Mm-hmm. Most friendliest people I've ever met oh, in, the, in the world. Yeah. You like, you the like smiling the fi- culture, they call them, you know? Oh, dude. It's, and then the food's delicious. Mm-hmm. Right? That was good food that night, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's hard to eat when you just sat through two hours of traffic. Yeah, to get to somebody's birthday. Who has a birthday on a Friday afternoon at six p.m. by the interstate? Bob. Yeah, yeah, Bob. In Los Angeles, dude, yeah. off yeah. the I five, the busiest interstate <laughs> on the planet Earth. Busier than India. Uh, yep. Busier than the Yangtze. <laughs> busier than all of that. Let's can okay. So we're let's uh. Let's wrap this up because I know you're. Because uh, we, yeah, we we got to catch a flight. And you no, gotta, and look, this has been a blessing, man. Look, yeah, I, dude, I, I remember I, meeting you on, thinking, dude, yeah, because I didn't know that he had a brother, and it yeah. just blew my mind. You, you cracked me up. You said something because, like, because you were looking at me and like you, you're like, because uh, I guess you didn't believe my age, and you're mm-hmm. like, oh man, it's too late to grow. You said something funny, <laughs> but it stuck with me. I'm like, yeah, I, because like, look at it. I'm still like, I feel like a nah, kid. but you're beautiful, man. Yeah, you're a good guy. I appreciate guy. it, man. You seem like a really good guy, and I'm happy that you found a lady that. Yeah. I mean, I just remember seeing you guys laugh and just like being like goofy and just seem like I was like, man, these two kids are. Hopefully, they don't have a child, you know, because this child's gonna be mentally handicapped. <laughs> 
But I also remember, because where I'm from, if you see two mentals hug and you call the cops on them. And that was a rule when I was young. And that's true, dude. That's true. If you see two mentals hugging, you call the cops immediately because once two mentals don't make a non-mental. You know, rarely do they. And it's a risk and it's a, it's high risk, low reward. That's what they call that psychology in psychology uh, but yeah, yeah. man I, you know what I'm happy to be here and I, yeah man and we'll hopefully next tra- next time we'll get to know each other a little bit better yeah which uh, episode of this past weekend should they check out specifically yeah if, is a- mm, let me see the a good one is this we had one called the dark arts extravaganza Oh. And a lot of people call in about the dark arts. Okay. So that's what some, is the dark arts? The dark arts can be anything. You know, it can be people that are, you know, jerking off too much or doing self, oh. self-pleasure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It can be people that are, you know, doing drugs, you know, and struggling mm-hmm, with uh, addiction. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It can be people that are, you know, hiding stuff in their ass. It could be anything. It could yeah. be, you know, making love outside of your marriage. It could be just the just those feelings of self-loathing and those feelings that make you feel like you're not a good enough person or you're not a man or you're, you know, it could be somebody that's afraid to come out of the closet or somebody that's afraid to make a call to their stepdad. It could be anything that prevents you from being your best self. I like that. Those are the dark arts. So where could they see, uh, listen to this stuff? They can check it out on iTunes or YouTube. It's called This Past Weekend. And then uh, you're like Theo um, Vaughn, and I got an album out there called Thirty Pound Bag of Hamster Bones." Okay, where could where could they where could they d- get yep, that? They where, busted a man in our town with thirty pounds of hamster bones on him. <laughs> where could they get that? They can get that on iTunes. Okay, uh, and then what about your Instagram? Digital World, just Theo Vaughn, T H E O V O N. Uh huh. And then and, any uh, upcoming shows you wanted to? No, I'll do a new tour. When will this come out soon? Yeah, tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday. 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 Great. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just uh, no, I'll have a new tour out in the in, in the new year. A week from Wednesday, yeah, next week. No, I just want to wish everybody a uh, a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays. Mm-hmm. And what are you guys in Korea? What do they celebrate? I don't even know, man. I Jesus. Been, yeah. I know. What? I don't in know. Philippines, what do they celebrate? Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm talking about just making sure they still know who their daddy is, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, they celebrate Christmas over there. Yeah. So happy whatever you celebrate. And I hope that this holiday season is a loving time. Um where you get to sit and have conversations with people, even if you don't know them that well. Yeah, and, uh, and like we're doing kind of now. Yeah, and just, we're, we appreciate you guys joining us. I appreciate you coming, man. Yeah, man, me yeah. too. 100%. I was, to be honest, with you, I was nervous because we've been watching your bits. I'm like, oh man, what do I, what are we going to talk about? I don't know. But that's a gift to you is you just yeah, have like this thing where it's know. like, you don't even have to have any plan. You know? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> we got 40 okay. minutes. Hey Bryce, how we doing on time, buddy? Good. What's well, the time? You What's the time later? Okay, thank you, brother. You got to fly out. Yeah. With that being up. said, it's time for Little Ray's World, man. <laughs> here this week beep looks like a god dang apricot what's your name man your name is ross and you're a part of the football team you're basically a jock weren't you well how'd you turn into a god dang apricot man You're cruising the strip near the beach, and you picked 
a fight with the wrong dudes, didn't you? You got in a fight with the MMA fighter and he put you in a Darts choke and killed you, didn't he? Now you're a god dang apricot, aren't you? And your name is Ross the Apricot. We wrote a song about you. It goes like this, man. This one's about Ross the Apricot, man. Ross the Apricot. Ross the Apricot, he was a typical type job. In the locker room of halls, all you heard was talk. What people didn't know is that his daddy owned a yacht. Came from a lot of money with the beamer that was bought. Join us next week for another episode of Little Ray's World, man. See you then. And check out Theo's episode of the Dark Arts Extravaganza. Let him know Stevie brought you, guys. Stevie Weeby brought you. Woo!